saddle off my horse. I wasn't going to rob you. I'm leaving you my own horse. Don't come any closer. Not before we strike a bargain that's satisfactory. Unfasten your sword belt. Now listen here. And unbuckle that beautiful dagger too. What's the matter? Who's chasing you? Those cutthroats of Alvise. So that's why you need a fresh horse. Yes. What about the river? The boundary of Alvise's lands? I see, then you must be a murderer, if they can pursue you on the other side. They are the ones who have murdered my father, the Count of Santa Lia. What makes you think the murder was commanded by Alvise? He's famous for his justice, although he is a weak man. That's just the reason. Nobody but a cowardly governor would be likely to order such a deed. And now, do they want to kill you too? Yes. I am the last survivor of my family. And Alvise knows me well enough to realize I shall live only for revenge. I believe you. The horse belongs to you. What's that you're doing? I'm reading your future in the magic sands of the desert. <laughs> Wonderful. Tell me what my fortune is to be, Gypsy. You will ride a long way mounted on my white horse. But completely in a circle, you will return here again. Fables, old wives' tales. The hand which will extend you, the olive branch of peace, is spattered with human blood. Your words are as meaningless as a flight of crows. They don't frighten me. Beware the one whose black glove has a red crest embroidered on it. This is for the loan of your horse and for my fortune. Farewell. Oh, spirits that be, protect him. He is so young, so handsome. And his heart is pure.
I see you once more, creature with your face hidden, your soul branded by the devil's hoof print, your hand covered by a black glove with a red crest on it. <laughs> it bears the crest of Saint Elia. Yes, it belongs to Corrado. You shall have nothing to fear as long as you help us. From whom did you steal this dagger? I stole it from no one! <gasps> Stupid gypsy wench. <laughs> My lords, don't do me any harm! Wake up, you witch! Or I'll have you burnt at the stake for practicing black magic. A gentleman dropped the dagger by mistake. Which way was he headed? For the ford across the river. We've come too late. We've been tricked. And our horses are nearly exhausted. Let's go back. What about the gypsy? Bring her back with us. Perhaps we can learn something more from her. One moment before we proceed. You are lying to us. Speak up. I've told you everything. I swear it. Where is he hiding now? Where is he? <laughs> you know much more than you're telling, I'm sure of it. Where is his hiding place? I'd advise you to speak up. It certainly will not be his protection that will save you from having your pretty face scarred with a spur. <laughs> Well, Ubaldina can hardly wait to write my sentence on your face. <laughs> Leave her alone, you idiots. I'd like to put you in her position. Make you give information you don't possess. Get out of here, Ludovico. This is my business. <laughs> what do you know about women? Their tender lips will open only for gold, or better still, they will open for love. Isn't that true, Ubaldina? She loathes you. Right now, she loathes me. But don't tell me that she loves you. That would be too comical. Untie her. And they wanted to disfigure you. Huh. She is beautiful, isn't she? Have you just begun to see that, cousin? Ludovico, one day a woman will be your ruin. Come. You won't be my ruin. You see, gratitude is the first step toward loving a man. And you, you stupid fool, would have preferred to torture her. <laughs> Why is it, Lodrizio? With him, you can never control your temper. Pretend with Ludovico. Follow my example. You're right, I should. But with his sneering way and his sarcasm, he makes me mad with rage. Because he's handsome. Forceful and sure of himself. Life has given him everything. And I have only this hatred. This hatred. Hatred! Just look at me. Say it! Say it! You are disgusted at the sight of me. That I am less than a man and more than half a monster. Leave me alone. Go away! Go away! Oh. <laughs> Some wine? That wretched cousin of mine would destroy such a beautiful creature as you. You may do with me as you wish, my lord. Except make you love me. And yet your love belongs to a man whom you've seen only once. Unless you're holding back the truth about him. Where is he now? I've already told you the truth. I'm not the sort of woman to lie to anyone who saved my life. But we must understand each other. I too have many things I want to discover. And you will help me to do so. I would do whatever you commanded. Please tell me. 
You'll be what you are. A girl who can listen, ask the right questions, report what she knows, and be loved. The murder of St. Elia was the last thing we needed. The people are discontented, they're nearly destitute and the slightest pressure might spark off a revolution. I sympathize with you, uncle. More than a counselor to you, the Count was your good friend. And now I'm left alone. Meanwhile, the situation in my domain is getting worse every day. Your cousin Ludovico might help at least. Ludovico, he only makes the situation worse than ever. Every day there is a new scandal or a duel with a nobleman whose wife he chanced to find desirable. Even that poor little Richarda. Richarda? Why, she's almost a relative. And my cousin must never know that it was I who told you this. He wouldn't hesitate to kill me. He will stop at nothing, you know. Stop at nothing, it's true. These words of yours have aroused my suspicion. What? That the murder of Santalia could have been his doing. No, that's absurd. The Count did not have a beautiful wife or daughter. He was a widower. And besides, my cousin would never be capable of such a pointless crime. Whatever you may think of a scandalous life he is leading... He's a disgrace to us. A disgrace to us. What is it that you find so disgraceful, Uncle? If I happen to be like him, do you believe no one would give a thought to me? Do you know what they call him? The devil's hoof print. Don't think that my escapades are undermining your authority. But you are because you're too old and too feeble to be a good ruler. I'll banish you for life. Don't get upset, Uncle. Please forgive him. You know your health is precious to us. You have to leave soon for your annual pilgrimage. What would happen to you if you were deprived of your heavenly benediction? And what will happen to us if someone denounces us to the prince as the murderers of Count Santalia? The populace idolized that man. And the one responsible should be brought to justice, whoever he is. What news of his son, Corrado? None. He mysteriously dropped out of sight. Then search for him. He might be useful to give some information, of course, in his own way. And remember, I want him alive. That goes without saying, dear uncle. In fact, a dead man can't bear witness. Do you think that Corrado might suspect us? I'm afraid so. What shall we do? We must manage to close our dear old uncle's ears, because I believe Corrado could be useful to us without his realizing it. This is what I plan to do. During the pilgrimage to the sanctuary, I'll see that our uncle... Tomorrow, I'll place a band of solid gold on each one of you and let you fly away. It's time you were both free. Let's hope they don't run into any falcons or cruel huntsman's arrow. Oh, no. Nothing unfortunate will happen to them on their honeymoon. Don't you recall the legend we heard that French troubadour tell when he was here? Any girl who fastens a band of gold on a pair of turtle doves, that girl before the year is out will surely become a bride. Madonna Ginevra! Madonna Ginevra! What is it, Jen? I overheard some bad news while I was at the market today. Corrado di Santelia is a fugitive. Corrado? Many people are saying that the murder of his father Be was still. done. I forbid you to even think what you were about to tell me. I'm going to see my father. What's wrong with her? For a long time, Ginevra has been secretly in love with Corrado. And now in the town, they are saying that it was her father who ordered the death of Corrado's father. Don't be so depressed, Father, please. This awful thing that happened is no fault of yours. You have acted as justly as you could, and no one knows it better than I. Should I abdicate? But in favor of whom? Ludovico is hated by all. Don't ask me to advise you. It is too much responsibility to place on my shoulder. A while ago, Uncle, you threatened to banish Ludovico. It was I who spoke up in his defense, but I was wrong. I think that the people would approve of it. Lord Rizio, how could you say such a thing about your cousin? I am doing my duty as a subject. Father Leonardo. I beg you to advise my father alone. I trust you. May I accompany you, my dear?
My daughter cannot tolerate the presence of either of her cousins. Yes, I know it's true that she's really afraid of them, perhaps without being fully aware of the fact herself. Are you still prepared to make your annual pilgrimage, Count Elvise? Now more than ever, Father Leonardo. La, 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 la. La, 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 The devil's hook print. Please leave me now, cousin. Why do you always run away from me? Why can't you understand me? I will never understand you. I love you, Ginevra. Give me a single thread of hope to cling to. I'm afraid that my love for you might turn into hatred. I don't, I don't want to hate you, but only to kneel down to you in adoration at your feet. Just as if you were the Madonna. What you say is wicked. You have to be mine. Or else you will drive me insane, even if I should have to force you. Please forgive me. I forgive you, Lord Vizio. But you mustn't talk this way. You're beautiful. Please leave me alone. I beg you. You shudder. I make you shudder because I'm deformed. Because I don't know the art of pleasing the ladies. I know that they call me the devil's hoofprint. I had faith in you. I respected you as the Madonna. Instead, you are just like all the others, ready, eager to inflict wounds upon my feelings. The celestial color of your eyes only conceals the depths of cruelty lurking inside your heart. And your lips that seem so gentle and chaste are happy to offend at every opportunity. <laughs> Ginevra, I know you don't want to be mine, but I swear to you that no one else shall ever have you. <laughs> Whosoever, man or woman, gives the slightest bit of aid to the bandit known to you, under the appellation of the avenging arrow, shall be deprived of all rights and put to death on the spot. Your generous lord and ruler promises you, however. Words, 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 only empty words. The avenging arrows against the oppressors. He protects the poor people and seeks vengeance when they suffer. Tell me who I'm going to marry and how soon. When the migrating flights of geese settle on the waters of the marshes, when the skies are overcast and the first frosts have turned the bare trees into skeletons of ice. We must take action now, right away. As long as we are governed by Count Alvise, there will not be any peace for us. We are all in agreement. But the populace... The populace? The populace will be with us when Carrale de Santalia gives them the word. He's inherited all the friendliness and confidence they once felt for his father. We shall have to find him if we're to put an end to this tyranny. But where do we look for him? That isn't so hard to guess. Remember how good a marksman he was at archery? I sure do. He won the tournament last May Day and the award from Lady Ginevra. Many of the men which Count Alvise sent out to search for him were afterwards found murdered with an arrow planted right through their heart. The Corrado must be... The Avenging Arrow. No. <laughs> Watch what you're saying. The crows are circling. I have my own champion. I'd be glad to match him with any of yours. The match is on, then. Very well. Spingada. Wake up now. It's about time. 
I opened the bet. <laughs> How about a keg of wine on Spingarda? I'll take it. The wolf battle win. I'll bet ten gold pieces on the wolf. I'll take two to one on Spingard. This is the rebel's den, my lords, but have no fear. Send us the gypsy girl. The gypsy girl at once. Now we can see just how efficient your spy is. Have your word of honor, my lord. At daybreak, a servant of Count Corrado's will be leaving the palace of Santelia. Have him followed. For you. Let me stop. No, that's too late. Take this. I'll teach you. Wine for everyone! Now, do you see the best way to unlock the lips of a woman? She said she had your word of honor. What for? I have promised her that not the slightest harm will be done to Corrado. She has unfortunately fallen in love with him. Are you mad? No, cousin. Corrado will have to be on our side if we are to have the support of the populace in eliminating our dear uncle. Now, I'm beginning to understand you. But... If Corrado suspects us? Your own dear Ubaldina is famous as death's right hand, you might say. Let us drink to the overthrow of tyranny and the return of our liberty. May this wine be medicine for our pain. Gentlemen, it is not our custom to offer wine to anyone who keeps his face hooded. Ubaldina! And Raniero, the black vultures of the devil. We also are with you against the government of Alvise. May we be allowed now to drink your wine? I would like very much to believe you. Who can prove what he says? I can. Alvise's nephew. I am not unaware of the sufferings of the people and of how you hate his tyranny. You are the final authority. Alvise is your representative and nothing else. You alone are the masters here. And you have every right to raise a rebellion. Sir Lodrizio, the people here are calling for Corrado di Santalia and for the murderers of his father. And they shall have them both. This I promise you. We shall pray, my daughter. Pray that the future will be brighter than the sad days we are living in now. Father, remember to place the roses on the tomb for dear mother. I'm worried that something will happen to him. Nothing happens to anyone who is going on a pilgrimage. I hope what you say is true, Gemma. Oh, you're dead. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Master, there was no reason for you to frighten your faithful old Mancuso. Ah, faithful, Cucho. but not so bright. Didn't anyone ever tell you the nightingales sing only during the night? <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> Sir Corrado, when I think of the state you're in, it's a wonder I don't twitter like a bat. <laughs> Did you bring everything I ordered? Oh, surely. There's the food and fresh clothes and all the gold money there was in the strong box. Good. I saw him. Good. Don't think that the servant knew we were following him and led us on a wild goose chase? No, Solotrizio. What is it? Corrado is here. Deploy your men, then. You cover the right, you cover the left, and the rest with me, quickly. It's entirely up to you now, and you had better be sure to win him over. It would be a great pity if he started a scuffle, and I should happen to kill a woman mistaking her for a man. But doesn't it make you afraid to spend the night here alone? These old places are so gloomy. It's better than being a prisoner of Alvise, and besides, afraid of what? Of evil spirits. <laughs> These ruins are full of them, I bet you. Why should the living be afraid of dead men? After all, they're resting in peace. <laughs> <gasps> Look there. That one isn't resting in peace. Oh, drive it away, mister. It's only a woman, you idiot. Yes, maybe the ghost of a woman. Who are you? What do you want? One day I told you that you would ride in a circle and come back here. The gypsy girl. How did you find me? I simply followed the lead of your servant. Oh, brainless, stupid imbecile that I am. And I wasn't mistaken. What do you want of me? I have come with a proposal of peace, an alliance against Alvise, your father's murderer. And who is making it? My friends I left behind in the city? Ricardo? Gorberto? No. Sir Lodrizio. Lodrizio, that miserable wretch. Explain what this means or I'll kill you. That criminal. Sir Corrado, you're hurting my arm. Let go of me. Tell me why he picked you to come here. It's a trap! It's a trap! You snake! <gasps> no! No, no! Greetings, Sir Corrado. I never would have thought you'd be so rough with someone who loves you. Nobody loves me. All I have are my enemies, beginning with you. I have come here as your friend, Corrado. And did you bring your men along with you just for the ride? I wasn't sure how you were going to receive me. Tell me what you're up to, Ladrizio. The populace is with me, and I want you to be on my side. The people would never be associated with the murders of my father. That's just who we have banded against. It was Alvise who arranged to have your father murdered. And if you still have any doubt, read this. You will recognize the signatures of all your friends. They're all in this with me to overthrow the tyrant. Very well, Ladrizio. My sword will be with you as long as justice is done. And it will be done. Alvise will be judged by the prince himself according to law. He will not escape, I can assure you. My cousin Ludovico, in the heat of the chase, he is more dangerous and relentless than a half-starved wolf. for the convent. Hurry. We'll take the shortcut. Ludovico, what's the meaning of this? God does not pardon those who dare to profane his house. Don't get excited, Father Leonardo. The city has broken out in revolt, and I have come here to defend my uncle's life. I'll escort you to the castle of Rocanera. There you will be out of danger. I don't believe you. I won't go with you. Don't compel me to resort to force with you. 
It's your safety that makes me disobey your orders. Leandro, ride to the city and inform Lord Lodrizio that my Lord Alvizi is out of danger. And I want him to bring my cousin Ginevra to Rocanera. Don't be afraid, Count Alvise. God would never permit such wickedness. If they can manage to drive the horses at a fast pace, Lady Ginevra will be with Lord Alvise before nightfall. She's been upset by the same dream for two nights in a row. A great falcon swooping down on the feeble deer and ripping out his eyes. Something is going to happen. I can feel it. Barbara! Barbara! Oh, heavens, what are they oh, doing? What is it? They have taken the city by assault. They are massacring the followers of Lord Alvise in the streets. We escaped by a miracle. Listen to them. They're storming the palace. They've overwhelmed the guards. Sir Lodrizu is leading them. Hurry, hurry. Go and hide yourselves upstairs. And you? Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself better on my own. Ginevra! Mother. Madonna. Protect her from the devil's hoofprint. Where is your mistress? I don't know. Where is she? She's gone away. Where is she gone? I don't know. Make her speak. She's all yours. Oh! Oh! Where is Geneva? Ah! Mercy! Have mercy, I will tell you. Pity. She's ready to talk too soon. She is well on the way to the sanctuary. She took the road through the forest. has always made me feel so terribly afraid. I wish we'd gone by the other road through the hills. That one's too long, milady. You wouldn't be able to rejoin your father this evening, you know. I'm almost sick with worry about him. I can hardly wait to see him again. Cheer up, milady. We've almost reached the bridge over the green water. Decision, my lady. We'll spare all those who surrender. Do you wish to dismount, my lady? Don't be afraid, Ginevra. There is no reason to. We have come here to escort you to your father in the castle of Rocanera. You will not be lacking of the necessary protection. I would come with you myself if it were not necessary for me to be in the city to quell the revolt. Which you yourself provoked, didn't you? Corrado, 
I yield you the honor of accompanying my lady Ginevra. I believe you are acquainted, aren't you? I do have this honor, but I fear that my lady must have a short memory. In fact, I do. I don't recall having met such ingrates and traitors as you, sir. Make allowances. You will appreciate our concern for your safety in good time. I leave you the carriage, dear cousin. You're grateful for that at least, aren't you? Give me a horse, one of you. I entrust her to you, Carrado. And I will hold you responsible. The best of hunting, Corrado. I have confidence in you. Right on! The strongholds of my uncle's followers are going up in flames. Look here. Even the rooftops of the garrison houses are beginning to smoke now. <laughs> I wonder how many dead there are. More than I expected. We killed everyone who refused to give obedience to your orders. The grave diggers will have a windfall to Baldina. I expect they, at least, will be grateful. Sit down. Here at my feet. Look at me. How do I seem to you? Worthy to sit on the throne, but be on your guard against that Ludovico, my lord. He is burning with ambition to command here, and as you know, he will stop at nothing. With your assistance, I too will stop at nothing. You can always count on me to do anything against Ludovico. How you must hate him. More than you do, my lord. Perhaps because I loved him once too much. Uh, no. You are not the one I want. Our dearest cousin, Ludovico. <laughs> Aren't you going to bid good night to our illustrious prisoner? Do you think I should? Better not arouse her suspicions of you. Captain! You will proceed to the castle and inform the Lord Ludovico that everything has gone exactly as he ordered. Yes, sir. I was advised to come over and wish you a good night's rest, but it wasn't such a good idea. Now you're being insolent. I wouldn't let a traitor touch my hand. And you're quite right not to. You are no different from all the others. The fact is, they are better than I am. They are struggling for a common and cause, you? only to avenge my father's death. He was a truly just man. And are you convinced you know who the murderer is? Yes, I can tell you his name if you wish me to. No, don't tell me that. You're not a very accomplished courier, Sir Corrado. That never was my specialty. When I told her that I would give her a hundred pieces of gold, the virtuous wife of my best friend suddenly kissed me. When I was getting up to leave, she asked me where I was going. I have already found a woman, I told her. And now, with your permission, I'm going out to look for a hundred pieces of gold. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching him closely, and I don't believe that I'm an utter fool. Sir Corrado can't be one of your enemies. Your opinion doesn't interest me at all. Please forgive me, Cynthia. I was thinking of my father. My cousins are capable of doing anything. They've never stopped hating him. What's to become of us? You're trembling, my lady Ginevra. Let's go now. Come along into the carriage. No. I feel like I'm suffocating inside it. Bring me my big cloak.
<laughs> Don't be afraid. It's my duty to give you protection. I wish to thank you. The hand of a traitor must never touch your own, my lady. But I beg of you, try to understand me. I'm desperate with fear. Calm yourself. Nothing will happen to you now. You may rely on me, my lady. Garado. I advise you to get some rest. We are leaving at daybreak. What a pleasure to see you again, dear cousin. I'm afraid I cannot say the same. Let me bid you welcome to Rocanera. Prepare one of the guest's apartments and see that nothing in the way of comfort is missing. Thank you for your meticulous attention. Where is my father? He's in his room, since he's not feeling too well. But don't be alarmed, my dear cousin. A mild indisposition. He'll soon be himself again. You are most welcome too, Corrado. I'm happy that you decided to espouse our worthy cause. I'll repeat what I have said to your cousin. I am one of you as long as you stay clear of any disloyalty. Sir Corrado, would you mind giving a look at this horse's hoof? Yes, yes, later. It might be dangerous to delay. He's a mighty fine horse. What is it? You must be constantly on your guard. What I have heard these soldiers talking about doesn't please me a bit. This place is really a den of murderers. Explain what you mean. Nothing but the worst sort of criminals and cutthroats are in the pay of the two cousins. All they talk about is slaughtering and sacking cities. They are not exactly the types to defend the rights of the people. Very well, you keep a sharp eye on them. And if anything worse develops, inform me at once. Yes, yes, yes. Don't hold anything back from me, Father dear. What have they done to you? Nothing. I was only worried about you, my dear. But now that you're here, I'm much more at ease. What else is giving you trouble? Don't hide it from me. I know you too well. It's about Corrado. Corrado de Santalia is here? It was he who escorted me to the castle. What did he do? Did he fail to show you respect? Oh, no. He had to protect me, even. But he suspects that you... You, father. Will you? I shall speak to Corrado, and he will believe me. Yes, father. He will believe you without a doubt. Tell him, too, that... There are certain things I cannot tell him, my daughter. If I recall the usages of the world, it is you who must permit him to come and speak to you. What's wrong with your aim, Carrado? You're risking your reputation as an infallible marksman. What's happened to you? Ah! <laughs> your arrow must have hit a cloud. Don't be surprised if it begins to rain. What's bothering you so much that it completely ruins your aim, Corrado? Nothing. This castle depresses me. The days run slowly. And what else? Why should I speak of it, Father? When a man loves a young girl, he shouldn't love. Because their fathers were deadly enemies. No, Corrado. There is neither hatred nor enmity when one truly loves. What is the young girl doing? She's living shut up in her rooms, and the man who's in love with her is living beside her, but she never sees him. What are you doing about it? Don't miss now. Good for you! A clean bullseye. Do you still believe that Count Elvise could have sent the murderers of your father? I don't know what to believe. I no longer know where to look for good or evil. Father, listen to your own heart, Carrado. It surely will lead you to the right road if you will unburden it of all resentment and hatred. Corrado, in the name of our Lord, I'm asking you to speak to Count Elvise. No, Father. Don't ask me to do that. I know. It's a bitter trial. 
But it's the only way you can be brought to see the whole truth. I have prolonged my stay here more than I should have, for you and for Ginevra. For your protection, I'm leaving you Corrado. One jailer or another, it's the same to me. Must you consider me an enemy, dear uncle? You are mistaken. Rodrizio in my place would have kept you locked up close in the dungeon, and he would have had his way with Ginevra. She'd be better off dead, killed with these hands. Since I well know that you're capable of it, I ask your permission to become her legal husband. You married Ginevra? Whatever for? To get your hands on her inheritance, is that it? You misjudge me. Living so close to her, I have discovered that I have fallen madly in love with her. Don't be insulting. All I'm asking is to have your consent. You shall never have it. Never. Perhaps you've forgotten that I hold you in my power, and I might easily use force on you. However, my dear uncle, we shall talk it over when I return from the city. And now I have the pleasure of wishing you a pleasant night. <sighs> Are you still up? Has my beautiful cousin been making conversation with the moon? Are you spying on me? No, let us say my soldiers are guarding you with discretion to spare you uh, unpleasantness. Uh, I believe your father has something to tell you, Ginevra. <laughs> Raniero, don't leave this corridor. As tonight will be somewhat distressing for our guests, I don't want any surprises. Nine. Made my point. Hold it! These dice are loaded. What's that? Stop! Put up your swords at once, if you don't want a lesson from me. Sir Corrado, don't interfere in these gambling arguments of ours. I give the orders here. Understand? You deserve to be killed right here on the spot. It's a disgrace to call you a soldier. You're a hyena. Drop that stuff now. Drop it, I told you, do you hear? Tie him up. He's a troublemaker. Corrado. Huh? Look here, Corrado. It's plunder from some robbery. That's the seal of the uprising. They, too, were murdered, just as my father was murdered. Bring him over here to the well. What are you going to do? Down with him. Have pity. Have pity, Sir Corrado. I'll have as much pity on you as you showed when you slaughtered my best friends. I was ordered to. By whom? Who was it? Down! No. Let go of me. Have mercy. Have mercy! Down! Uh Who was it? Is there a show going on? And you didn't tell me. I don't want to interfere with your pleasure, but don't you believe it's rather late to disturb our impressionable guests with the screams of this unfortunate wretch? He is a murderer, a robber, and a cowardly cheat. All those charges against one man alone. But it's up to the tribunals to decide. We're both believers in law and order, aren't we, Corrado? There are times when law is too slow with its punishments. But it always comes at last to whoever is guilty. 
But that's just what I was thinking. Sir Ludovico, what shall we do with the prisoner? Put him in a solitary cell in the dungeon. And I should be most grateful if he were to be killed while making an attempt to escape. Sir Carado? Milady Ginevra would like to see you. You will find Milady Ginevra in her room at the end of the corridor. Ginevra. I want to thank you for having come to me. Is there something you wanted me to do for you? Please excuse me. I'm afraid it was foolish of me to ask you to come here. Curado! Curado! Don't be afraid. Everything will be all right. You can put your trust in me. Oh, Curado. In my heart, I could not be mistaken. You're such a kind person. You couldn't be my enemy. I never was in my life, Ginevra. Never. Oh. Ginevra, if you will allow me, I will swear an oath to you that I will protect you for as long as I live. And now I'm able to tell you. I could never summon the courage to tell you before. Ginevra, I love you. Corrado, my darling, I love you too. Oh, I love you. You've made me the happiest girl in the world. No one could be more unfortunate than now, I. Now listen, Ginevra. I shall do everything I can to get you away from this castle. We'll both go far away from here, where nothing will interfere with our love ever again. I'm afraid, Corrado. This rebellion has already caused so much bloodshed, and so much more will have to be shed. Lodrizo and Lodovico are not on the side of the people. And what distresses me most is that you've been taken in by them. Why are you with those two? Do you still believe that my father... No, no. I realize now that Count Alvizi has been the victim of a plot. Don't be afraid, Ginevra. If now I'm on the side of your two cousins, it is only to find out the truth. And the moment I have proof that they are guilty, I shall inform the prince, and he will see to it that full justice is done. They won't give you enough time. Ludovico wants to assure himself of the throne. He has asked me to marry him. And you? He made threats to my father. And you? This silence of yours is more eloquent than any words you could say. No, Corrado, no! Don't leave me now. You know that I love you. Please help me. There's one way. I have to get you away from this place. Ginevra. <laughs> <laughs> Show him in. Get out. Uh, Get out! <laughs> my profound respects, my lord. I thought you were a loyal mercenary of my cousin. So I was, my lord. Until the moment I saw you seated on that throne. <laughs> Men of intelligence can always count on food and lodging in my palace. What news do you bring me from the castle? The official news you will hear from Sir Ludovico, my lord. Let's hear the other kind, the news that my cousin doesn't know about. The information I have to give you won't gladden your heart. Speak up! What is it? Please forgive me, my lord. Milady Ginevra and Corrado de Santalia are deceiving you. How do you know, filthy gossiper? Corrado spent a long time alone in a room with Milady Ginevra. And when they came out, they were kissing each other. That's enough! Did you hear what he said? Yes. 
I believe that Corrado must have found out the truth. Or he must at least entertain some serious doubts as to what you would have him believe. That's obvious. And that idiotic cousin of mine isn't even aware of it. Well met, dear cousin. I'm delighted to find you so easy and calm. Don't you think that all these gallows spoil the effect of the landscape? I've had to leave them there as a guarantee of our power. As a guarantee, did you say, cousin? We are hated as we are, separately. Can you imagine what it would be like if we were both united in power? Oh, I almost forgot. To tell you that our uncle has given his consent to my marriage with Ginevra. What's that? It's such a pleasant way to enable myself to sit down as the legal occupant of this throne. Ubaldina, come out and breathe some fresh air. This is a hiding place that I used long before you did. Don't give way to despair, Lodrizio. I want Raniero. I shall have to leave immediately for the castle. Do you still have that green bottle? Here it is. It's with this that our dear uncle will pay me for the insult. Let me do it for you, my lord. This is really my business. No, I need you to take care of our greater enemy. Go now. I'll tell you later. I'll not allow you any honors. Not even those of the gallows, cousin. This one is the shortest and safest way for you to take. Once you are across the border, two days on horseback will bring you to the castle of the prince. It breaks my heart to leave you alone here, Father. I'm afraid he could never stand the rigors of such a journey. No one would dare to touch me, my daughter. Come back with help from the prince as fast as you can. Corrado, I entrust her to your care. I shall be worthy of your confidence in me. Who's there? What is it? A message for you, Sir Corrado. Lodrizio, what has he written? He is replacing me here with Raniero, and he orders me to return immediately to him in the city. His henchmen have tracked down my father's murderer. No, Corrado, don't go to him. I implore you. I'm sure it's only another trap of that monster's. Corrado will have to decide. Experience has taught us to be obedient to the orders of Lodrizio. Otherwise, he will suspect us. The presence of Raniero here at the castle makes any sort of escape out of the question. Listen closely, Geneva. Once I am in the city, it will be easy for me to find some loyal friends. I shall send messengers to the prince. And if the situation should continue to grow worse, I can always find some people to take up arms against these traitors and cutthroats. May God protect you, Corrado. This game of yours with the magic sand doesn't entertain me. Hear my words, Sir Ludovico. The magic sands of the desert never deceive those who can read them. Black death is searching for you. It'll never find me here. I feel too full of life when I embrace you. Beware of your cruel cousin. He is a man who feels no pity. He is riding at the right hand of death. I'm not afraid of him any more than I am of these prophecies you make. Why must your lips always be prophesying horrible fates for me? When in reality, they were meant to be used only to pronounce words of love. I see death galloping in my direction. He wears a black glove with a scarlet crest. Do you recognize it? I'd recognize this one in a million. It once belonged to Corrado. A magnificent weapon. Swift, efficient and deadly. You will know how to use it. We shall eliminate two enemies with one blow. Go ahead now and be on your guard. We act tonight. <laughs>
You have come just in time, my friend. Sit down with us and enjoy yourself for a while. I rode my horse to death to face my father's murderers. Come on. I'll tell you. Out of my way, you two. <laughs> they exceed the limits of my hospitality. <laughs> Away with you. <laughs> Walking along the street that leads to the waterfront, on the left side, only a bow shot from the Barbican Gate, you will see a house. People call it the House of the Willow Trees. I know the house. The man who lives there now with his mistress is the one who gave gold to the band of murderers to kill your father. When you see who it is, you will readily understand why I cannot interfere myself. I leave him entirely to your vengeance. Remember, Corrado. The self-same man, if he were left alive, would also compel Ginevra to marry him. Give the password. He says far away. Give the password. He says far away. the password if you want to go on living. Have pity, have pity on me. Speak up, what is it? The piece is far away. <sighs> Give the password. Pisa is far away. Murderer, say your prayers, you coward, before I split your heart in two. You wouldn't go so far as to kill an unarmed man. This is the only hope you have left. Take it! Murderer. I'm not the one who did this. That's your dagger there, isn't it? 
I didn't kill him. This is a foul scheme of Odrizio's to get rid of me. Seize him. Out this way. Hurry, Carollo, follow me. Seize him. Seize that man. Don't let them escape! had that man right in your hands and then let him escape. The pair of them disappeared as if their gypsy girl were actually in league with the devil. We must leave for the castle immediately. I've had word that the prince is on his way there. I have to get there before he does. Don't you trust Raniero anymore? From now on, I trust no one but myself. What do you want done with the body of your cousin? Let him be exposed in the family chapel with the weapon still in the wound because the entire populace must believe that Corrado is an assassin. Raniero has succeeded. I wonder if our uncle will enjoy the companionship of Ludovico on his last journey. <laughs> Let's be off. The time has come to console Ginevra. Moretta! You have saved my life once again at the risk of your own. Whatever I do is in my own best interest, Corrado. From the vanquished, I pass to the victor now. No, you're trying to make me believe what is not true. Sir Corrado, when you become once again the master of your estates, then I shall ask you for the gold you owe me. As you wish. Marcuccio, deliver this into the hand of the prince. It's the act of accusation which I shall bring against Lodrizio. Loretta will testify to what I have written. And you, Sir Corrado? I'm going back to the castle. Ginevra is more in danger than ever before. Good luck to you, master. It's very dangerous territory, sir, even for a humble pilgrim. I realize that I owe oh. you my life. Please accept this ring as a memento of our chance encounter here on the hillside of the Holy Crosses. May the Lord be with you, my good sir.
don't any of you move from here. Ginevra, I'm sorry to have to disturb you, my dearest cousin, but I didn't want to delay paying you my respect in your great sorrow. The unexpected death of your father has saddened me more than I can tell you. Get away from me. I don't want to see you. How dare you show your evil face to me? You were the one who had a poison. You're his murderer. <laughs> you don't know what you're saying. Your bereavement has deranged you, and I have no wish to give weight to your foolish accusation. <laughs> have no fear. No one will threaten you anymore now that Ludovico has been assassinated by Corrado di Santelia. You're lying. You're so depraved that you take the light of tormenting me. And your Corrado is now being hunted down as a murderer. You'd better pray that they bring him back dead. Mind your own skin. Your last moment has come. Corrado. Raniero. Ubaldina. No, don't kill him now. For he deserves to die more slowly. Meditated. To compensate me for all the infernal trouble he has caused me. Any form of death would be more welcome than being forced to look at you. driven me out of my mind. But now, there is no one to stand between you and me. Now you will finally be mine, and mine alone. Everything is ready, my lord. Corrado's confession in full, as the murder of your cousin has been drawn up in detail. Put him to the torture until you can make him sign it. And let his sufferings be slow and exquisite. That's Ubaldina's business. Ubaldina. What a demon she is with that face that's so angelic. Go. I will denounce you to the prince at my first opportunity. He will never be able to find you. Where is Corrado? He is enjoying his very last moments of uninterrupted health. But I might still let you have his life as a gift, as my wedding present to you. Monster! I'd rather be dead than belong to you. Ah! Corrado! Corrado! Oh! You see the end that is in store for your beloved? No, I implore you. You alone are able to save his life. <laughs> By all the living devils, the prince is coming. Suspend what you're doing. Help! Help! Didn't you hear what he said? Yes, I heard what he said, but... You welcome to the castle of Rocanera, my lord prince.
My Lord and Prince, I beg you to forgive this far too modest reception, which is due to the great losses we have suffered in the last few days. Sir Lord Rizio, I beg you to accept my sincere sympathy and my profound condolence. Permit me to have this honor, my Lord Prince. How did you come by this ring? I took it from the murder of Sir Ludovico. I want to have a good look at this man. But why, my Lord and Prince? You will immediately obey my orders. Fetch him. Follow that woman. It might be dangerous to leave a murderer alone with a defenseless woman. I wouldn't want my impulsive curiosity to be the cause of the slightest unpleasantness for you. In my castle, everything is yours, my prince. Deign to accept my unworthy hospitality. I'm grateful to you, sir, but I'm unable to stop the night. I intend to proceed with my journey. Strange rumors have reached me of a contradictory nature. I'm sure they must be exaggerated, but I'm worried. Why, it's you. The humble pilgrim. I would never have thought that such a brave gentleman as you would also turn out to be a murderer. But since I owe my own life to you, I shall save yours. If you are a nobleman, I shall revoke all your titles and your properties will be confiscated. Without any weapons, without spurs, and on a horse without bridle and bit, as a wayfarer, you must cross the frontier of my country before tomorrow's sun goes down. In virtue of the powers invested in me, I now banish you henceforth. I'm grateful to you, my lord and prince, for your magnanimous concern for me. But I shall be killed a few paces away from the castle. Let me be granted instead the right to defend myself. Sir Ludovico was killed by a dagger belonging to me, but not by me. Can you prove this? I could have once, but now I doubt if the truth will ever come to light. You can't. Let me pass! Let me pass, I tell you! Just a girl! Let go of me! Bring that woman here. Here is the proof, my lord. Corallo is innocent. I can testify to everything he's written here. Read it, I beg of you. I've always loved you, Corrado. Farewell. Take this, Sir Corrado. to love me, Ginevra. You will love me when you can no longer see me in my deformity. Oh, oh please have pity on me. Not my eyes, not my eyes. Oh, God, oh, God, oh. Everyone is beautiful to the sightless. Everyone is beautiful.
darling, my love. Look after her. 